Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we learn about the Chris Cornell Signature ES-335. So this is one of those signature guitars that I've always wanted to review because I'm a fan of Chris Cornell myself. If you're not familiar with him and his work, in my opinion, he's one of the best, if not the best, alternative rock singer that's ever graced the world. I mean, he has a hauntingly good voice for what he does. Excellent songwriter, a great rhythm guitar player, definitely check out some of his stuff. The big two bands that he's been in that most people have heard of at one point in time or another is Soundgarden and Audio Slave. You might remember Audio Slave because we talked about it in the Tom Morello episode. Audio Slave is just Rage Against the Machine but fronted by Chris Cornell instead of Zach De La Rocha. But unfortunately, Chris lost his battle with depression in early 2017. Don't really want to go too much in depth into that. However, it is pertinent to know that he's no longer with us for this review and demo. Because this is actually a reissue model. The original Chris Cornell ES-335s were done in 2013. Gibson Memphis produced 500 of these signature guitars for him. There were 250 of them done up in an olive drab green finish with a Bigsby, and then 250 in a black finish that had a stop bar tailpiece. No Bigsby. And essentially, he was just going for an understated guitar that would be good for playing pretty much all genres of music. He didn't want anything too fancy or flashy. He just wanted something for himself just to play. So here's what he created. Just a standard ES-335, nothing funky with the woods or anything like that. But he did decide to swap out the pickups to what they call the Lollertron pickups. Essentially, these things are built to emulate the original filter truss. And instead of having a super glossy finish, he opted for a satin finish, which kind of helped these things be a little bit less expensive when they were brand new. Even though it was a signature guitar, it was not as expensive as a regular full gloss ES-335. If you look at an old Andertons video, the sign on the guitar says 2,099 pounds, roughly 2750 or so US, but an old Music Zoo article lists the minimum advertised price as 3,329 for the green and 2,099 for the black. But besides the pickups and the finish, uh, there's just a small little thing that made them special. These clear knobs that do not have any numbering to them. It's just kind of a really interesting look. They kind of shocked me when I first saw these things. They're definitely understated, which is what he was going for, and kind of cool. And then finally, on the back side of the headstock, they were numbered which one they were out of 250. So that made these things instant collectibles. Good luck ever finding one for its brand new price ever again. This one suffers from the modern day artist signature guitar curse, where you would be lucky to pick one of these things up for less than double the original price. But this is the only situation that I'm aware of that they actually reissued one of these guitars. So flash forward six years, 2013 into 2019. This is pretty much the first signature guitar that I remember coming out under the new Gibson ownership. Now it might've been in the works before they took over and whatnot, I'm not sure about that. This is just the first one that I remember Cesar talking about. The 2019 Chris Cornell signature model tribute guitar. Now remember, tribute because Chris Cornell is no longer with us. This was made approximately two years after his death under the Chris and Vicky Cornell Foundation. That's who Gibson partnered with to create these things. And once again, just like the original run, they made 250 additional of these, and they essentially just reissued the olive drab green one. Nothing has changed except for one big thing. On the headstock of the original, it's just the regular Gibson crown. However, for these tributes, they put Chris Cornell's little insignia signature on the headstock. And this is very controversial. There's a lot of big fans of Chris Cornell that feels that he would not have wanted that. Because on his original design, he didn't have his name anywhere on this guitar. He never thought of himself as a fantastic player. He just wanted a guitar that was built to his specs. For the original run, the only place he had his name anywhere on this was the case. And they do have that on this run as well. And the COA. But something I find really strange and a little bit distasteful myself is they have his signature on the COA? What? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. He wasn't with us at that time. I would have much rather have had the foundation or his wife sign these COAs or have her name on it because it was a tribute built to him. So whether you view this as distasteful and not so nice, I understand the mentality of it as well. They were just trying to pay tribute to him and they wanted to put that on his guitar. 
I really don't think they were trying to do anything malicious with this, but that is kind of part of the history and lore about this one. But something else you need to know that makes this one different from the original 2013 run is these were not made in the same guitar plant because the Memphis plant shut down in April of 2019. So these were actually made in Nashville. So that is another very slight difference. It's like if you look back in the 70s, a Kalamazoo versus a Nashville styled and made instrument, people prefer the Kalamazoos. So you just have to make your own judgments on which one you prefer. I kind of like these tribute models, but I think the original ones will always be more collectible. Especially that black one without the Bigsby because it hasn't been reissued. And Gibson put these things up at $4,000, just like the original run, quickly sold out. Scalper's market, you're usually paying anywhere between like five to six today, sometimes a little bit more. So to learn more about the Chris Cornell Signature ES-335, let's go ahead and throw this thing on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside the Tribute Chris Cornell 335, let's take a look at these things. So once again, we have Lawler USA pickups in here. They're the Lawler Trons. And it actually says that right there and labels it as neck and they, wow, even put the year on there. Man, I wish Gibson would do something like that so you could be so easy to identify the pickups. And then our bridge pickup here, let's go ahead and take a look at that one as well. Yeah, Lollertron Bridge 2019, cool. But as far as construction goes, we have a mahogany neck that has a long neck tenon into the maple center block that 335s have. And then the top, back, and sides are made of a maple poplar maple sandwich. You can kind of see what I'm talking about right there. ES guitars always look really sloppy within the cavities. I don't know, like, some of this is they just didn't clean it up very well. Other times, I, I'm just not sure. Maybe that's how 335s are supposed to look. <laughs> I don't know. But you always see those frayed edges in pretty much all of them. Let's check our readings. Okay, so these are relatively low output pickups. So our bridge is 5.32. I'm wondering if this will be like 4-ish. Uh-oh. I'm not sure what's going on with that one. Maybe there's something strange with our wiring, but I'm, I'm sure it's something very similar. But as far as the bridge, it's just your regular one, API branded. But keep in mind, all of this has been given kind of that VOS treatment where it's like slightly aged so it doesn't look brand new. You can see that especially on the pickup covers. Heck, they even did the VOS treatment to the frets. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but they definitely needed some polishing to make them look good again. And then this thing has a Bigsby. What I'm so curious about is why did they do a pretty much one-for-one -one reissue of something that they said was a limited edition? I think it would have been cooler if they would have finally made the green one in the stop bar variety. Maybe it's because Cornell liked the Bigsby one better. But I think it would have been better if they would have done the inverse of the original one. Because I think then people wouldn't have been so hypercritical of this limited run. But this one, once again, it's got a real Bigsby on it. But if you don't know how Bigsby's work, essentially there's a little spring right here that you compress with this arm and the ball ends of your strings go onto here and as you compress that that lowers the pitch of the strings and that gives you that little warbly effect. All I've got to say is this Bigsby makes this guitar rather heavy but output jack on the front you get your three-way toggle switch right here and you get individual volume and tone controls for each pickup. And here's an up close look at these just rather plain looking knobs. There's no numbers. It has the appearance of like frosted glass. Like it's not 100% clear, but it's not like super frosty either. They're just, you know, interesting. But they're built just like the reflector style knobs. They've got that flat top and then they've got that skirt to them. And here's our pick guard. You can take this protective coating off. But... So cool. Another difference between this one and the original run is the sticker that's on the inside here. This one has 2019 on each side, Gibson USA, the ES-335 dot, Chris Cornell, and then our serial number is there, as well as on the back side of the headstock. But moving on from our body, we get to the mahogany neck and the rosewood fretboard. Oh my goodness, isn't that just a night and day difference after I polished and conditioned this? Crazy how good it looks now. That was a really dried out fretboard. But this one just has your regular 22 frets. 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length with a 1.7 inch nut width, which increases to 2.04 by the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.83. And by the 12th, we're rocking 0.92. So by no means a chunky neck, but it still has a nice rounded neck profile to it. 
Truss rod cover is just completely blank on these. They don't say ES-335 or anything like that. And we get the Cornell signature and the Gibson Mother of Pearl logo. But remember, this is a satin finish all over this guitar. So it doesn't look quite as glossy and in your face as it normally does. But you can't really have a finish called olive drab green when it's shiny. So I guess it just makes sense it's satin. But thankfully, our truss rod is in good shape here. The only QC issue I saw was right here on the fretboard. Somebody went a little bit crazy with their fret file or the nut file or something. They were probably rounding the nut and then they went zoop and QC never caught that, which is kind of concerning. But do you really want to rip off the fretboard and put a new one on just because you made a small mistake? Well, I'll leave that one for you guys to talk about. Moving on to the back, this isn't a Tom DeLong ES-333, there's no back control plates here, so we can't actually see the electronics. From what I can see, it just looks like your regular style Gibson pots with orange drop capacitors. But what is interesting is since it's a thin satin finish, you can actually see through to the maple wood grain, which is, you know, kind of interesting on these things. It feels great to play. I like the way it just slides against you. It looks like uh, somebody at some point in time got a small little impression right there. But remember, this was not brand new. This did not come straight from the factory out of the box. This was purchased used, likely on the scalper's market. I'm not sure how much my buddy paid for this. But same thing goes for the mahogany neck. You can see that wood grain here. Now, the only other thing QC-wise that I want to talk about here is you can see some areas where the finish is kind of like bubbled up like there was something on the guitar when they sprayed over it. But this particular one is numbered 82 out of 250. And we just get regular Grover tuners on here. And this was when they had just switched back to the old system of year, day, 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 year. And it's within the first batch of guitars for that day, made in USA with the Grover tuners. Very cool. All said and done, this thing weighs 8 pounds, 8.5 ounces, so about 8.5 pounds. Honestly, it feels a lot heavier than that because that big speed really makes this feel body heavy. But let's go ahead and plug this thing in and hear how it sounds. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Now that we know all about the Chris Cornell Signature ES335 Tribute, what are my final thoughts on this thing? My goodness, this was a fun guitar. Like, when I first started this review, I was like, okay, yeah, it's a Chris Cornell. I do want to document one of these, and I do appreciate his singing voice and his songwriting, but man, this thing, it ranks up there with the Buckethead Les Paul. I had that much fun with it. I think it comes down to these Filtertron pickups. They are really cool. Like, they sound fantastic clean, but they also sound amazing dirty. And once you start playing some Spoon Man on this thing, there's no stopping you. It might not be for everybody, but I like the satin finish. I think it feels good. And I love the finish on this. It's very muted, but at the same time, I like green guitars. So if you don't like green, maybe search out one of those black ones. The only thing I do not like about this guitar is the Bigsby. That's quite, I really wish they would have just issued this as a stop tail to make it different from the first run. But hey, at least we got some sort of a tribute. So essentially the only negative things I can say is the tuning stability wasn't that great, but that just kind of comes with having a Bigsby. I did lubricate the saddles and the nut, but I think what you really need on this guy is a roller bridge. And it surprises me that since this is kind of a custom artist guitar that they didn't put one of those on there but I think you're one roller bridge away from having a perfect everything guitar. This one's definitely a keeper instrument, so keep your eyes out for one for yourself. That's what I'm saying here. Let's go ahead and check out the original case before we say goodbye though. But as far as the black light test goes, yeah, we can see a little bit on the truss rod cover, but it's a brand new guitar essentially. So we're not gonna see too much glowing at this point in time. Here's what our original case looks like. You get the signature up here, and it's pure white, and how this one differs from the original is the Gibson logo is also pure white. I think it was Gibson Custom Shop and Gold for the first run, so that is slightly different here. But you get this larger style latch, kind of like what you see on Taylor cases sometimes. It is a locking latch, and then you get your regular looking ones over here. So four of them on the front, and one on the back side here. And the interior for this one is actually kind of a uh, charcoalish gray. You get your double neck rest, good heel support, it's perfect for the ES-335. But as far as case can here, since this is now a Nashville, I think Gibson USA product, you get all that kind of case candy. So pre-pack checklist, baby photo, Gibson strap, and then here sleeps your like warranty paperwork, the Gibson multi-tool. But the most important thing that you wanna see is the COA, which is kind of interesting that a Gibson USA gets this. I mean, this is like high quality Gibson custom shop stuff. I hope you chocolateites enjoyed checking out the 2019 Chris Cornell Tribute ES-335. I had a great time. The prices of these things, they just kind of get crazy, but I get it now. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with a friend who you think would enjoy it, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.